All right, so we'll get started. Um, so for tonight's session, I sent out um, a couple reminders with some resources. So we're going to review um, lessons one through three and then um, review our help phrases. And then we're gonna attempt to do a immersion session from eight to 8.30. So we'll see if we can go that long without speaking English. <laughs> so, um, Let's go ahead and get started. And um, let's see, um, Grandma D, if you're able, um, they don't say. They don't say. get all Cause <laughs> Yet Tom the Peggy Gulibino on Tancago on the eight on the eight Mohammed dog. I can't pay them. Your daughter, I think, so though. Oh, 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 all right, and I see um, Alisan is joining us as well. I see she's connecting to the audio. Welcome, Alisan. Hande onde and bon. Hande onde, babon. Ah, awesome. Um, okay, so let's see here. Um, so at about a little after seven o'clock, uh, Dane will be joining us to go over the, like he'll give us some updates on the Kiowa language credentialing process, um, especially for level two, because I know we all have some questions about that and kind of what the expectations are and things like that. So prepare your questions. Um, and so with that, um, before I pull up the uh, lessons, kind of go over them, uh, does anyone have any questions about any of the previous lessons um, or just any questions in general for any of our mentors with us today? Bless you. Okay, hearing none, let me go. There's a few things. Um, let me find the Google Drive here so I can pull up the materials. All right. Is this, let's see, hopefully this is everything. One, two, three, okay. All right, I'm gonna share my screen so we can look at this together. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen. <laughs> oh. 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 I think I was supposed to say, let's see, to say it in Kiowa. Um, I have to look for my language here for, on our Sundays. Um, bless you. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, ha bat bon. How about bon? Bon. 
Bom. 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 Good shot. You see it. Good, good, good shot. It dog. It dog, ma. Okay. Um, let's look at where are the help phrases? Help phrases. Okay. Um, let's see if I can make this bigger. All right. Okay. Everyone remember, uh, let's see if we can, I'll, I'll do the first one and then we'll go to like the different teacher candidates and see if, uh, see if we remember how to say these. So and then our uh, mentors, you can correct us. So Hot so on a thong, yeah. Hair. Hot so hot. Say it again, Melody. I'm all it's doing. Hot so on a thong, yeah. Okay, say hot so. Hot so. Yeah, not hot so. Hot so. Hot so. Is that what, is that the reason for that, the sim, I mean, the colon? Oh, I think so, to draw it out. Okay, so, hot so, on a thong, yeah. Oh. Oh, on a thong. All right, uh, let's see. Um, Judy, since I see you next on the screen, you want to try this one? Ha, so, on a tongue. Ha, so, on a tongue. It's probably best left in Arabic. Which is a key witness for the gods. That's the first one. Oh, sorry. Uh, you, um, go ahead and try the second one. Well, we're all gonna take a oh, turn. Okay, that's all I'm <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yan Um. um I think uh I think Miss Marion wants you to enunciate the nasal a little bit more on the ya. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay, let's go to the third row. Um, let's see. Uh, Aunt Carolyn, are you there? Oh. You want to be the third one? Hande and Sai Do. Sai Do. Too long. Get that again. Hey, own day. All right. Oh, um, let's see who uh, uh, Ramon, I see you next. Honde in Delta. 
All right. Ah, uh, oh. uh, okay. Um, Courtney, I see you next. I'm always doing. All right. Oh. And um Alice Ann, um, since this one's uh yeah, we'll we'll just have you do this one. Or if you want to if you want to do the two, like this row and then this word here. Since they're so short. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ha, so ha. Hi. Oh. It's ha, so long. So long. Ha, so ha. Ha, so long. Ha, ha, so long. Ha, so long. Ha, so ha. Ha, oh, the AU. Remember, remember AU has an ah sound? Ha, ha, so ha. Ha, so ha. Better? Ha, so ha. You don't really draw it out. It's just ha. Ha, so la. Ha, so la. So so you kind of put a little accent on the solo. It's short, but it's the hardest thing. <laughs> You're doing good. Ha ha solo. Am I separating the L and the H too much? This is supposed to be ha solo. Ha, so ha. Ha, so ha. Ha, so ha. I got the high. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, okay, say it one more time, Miss Velma. Ha, so la. Ha, so ha. Ha, A W, A W, Ha, Ha, So La, Ha, So La, Ha, You got this. Um, I think the uh, it, uh, I don't remember if you were with us at the end of last week's session. Um, no. we talked about um the difference between the A sound and then the a u and then how the a the a the a sound is like a ah uh, and then the um the a u is a aw uh, like you kind of oh. like make your mouth more round <laughs> oh, oh so ha uh, better it almost sounds like a o oh, kind of a little bit like oh, if you oh. listen to the speak the um speakers like oh. it kind of sounds like they're making a o oh sound but it's Oh, and I think that's what they're hearing because we're we're. It took me forever. I mean, I still have trouble hearing that sound because it's I'm so used to English, you know. So, oh, we just have to practice it. <laughs> oh, 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 it's one of those that you got to say uh, in, in the mirror to yourself <laughs> a whole bunch of times. <laughs> I'll practice and I'll work on it. Aho. Thank you, Allison. Uh, let's see. Uh, this last one or last two. Um, uh, hey, the goon here or hey, the.
hot so ha all right and then uh, let's see i see you next on my screen um ramon go ahead and say the last one for us Pamoba. 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 All right. Any um, other feedback for us or any questions on the help phrases? So we want to keep our help phrases handy because when we at eight o'clock when we start our immersion session, um, we want to remember these so that we don't use English. These are like our crutches <laughs> to help us. Um, It'll keep us stay in Kiowa so we keep talking. Okay, let's look at lesson one. Um, okay, let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, lesson one. So for this, let's practice um, the whole row here. Um, so let's see. Uh, I went, Ramon went. Let's start with Judy since I see you on the screen. Um, you want to say this first row? Honde, onde, and bum. Ha, no, ado. No, tsap. Hey, ya. Hega aim a bonta. Hega aim. Oh, you only have to say the first row. Okay. Ha. <laughs> Aho. Any feedback for Judy? Let her say it again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Aim oi doi. Aim oi doi. Go ahead, Judy. Say the first row one more time. Honde onde and bum. Ha. Oh, good time. Ha. No. No, it's not. Thumbs up. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Do does everyone remember what the question, what the statement means, and what the response means? Wonderful to see you. Oh. And then you. Me and this is me too. Yes, me, me too. Oh, me too. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, let's see. The second row here. Um, let's see. Uh, Courtney, I see you next. Hey, and I burn the. Oh. And you can say the uh, response too. You don't have to. Repeat oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And any feedback for Courtney? 
Thumbs up. Uh -huh. And who knows what this means? Who can translate it? Then I will see you again. Oh. All right. Uh, let's see. The next row here. <coughs> Uh, let's see, looking at my list. Oh, hey, Nelson. On day, on day, aim bon. On day, on day, aim bon. Ah, oh, we're just uh, reviewing. We reviewed the help phrases, and now we're reviewing lesson one. And then we're going to go to lesson two and lesson three. And then um, so we can get ready for our immersion session at eight o'clock. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. Um, so we're all taking turns just pronouncing the statement and response here. So Nelson, would you be able to say this third row here for us? Uh, yes. No, no, no. And then the rest, and then the response. Not all. And then hall. All right. And then do does anyone remember what this one translates to? And me also. Oh, no, no, oh. Uh -huh. All right. Now, the final phrase here there's two versions that we can say. Aho, uh -huh, Nelson. Um, let's go back up to Judy. On their own day. They own day. Oh. And the translation. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, let me go to the uh, conversation. Okay, I think we did all those already. All right, let's go to lesson two. Um, oh, there's Dane. Put him in the room. I'm gonna make this bigger. All right. Hey Dane, on day on day aim bon. Oh. We're uh, reviewing, um, we reviewed the help phrases and lesson one. And so we're just going over the pronunciation again and translations. And so uh, let us go through lesson two and then we can uh, pause and then turn it over to you for some updates. All right. Okay, lesson two. Okay, so I'll do the first one. Ha, hey guy, yan hai ge da. Ha, yan hai ge. Ha, ha, ha. Yan hai gado. Yan 
And that means did, did you understand? And then, yes, I understood. And I have to look at the notes because we, we, uh, well, that's in lesson three, never mind. In lesson three, we uh, changed the wording a little bit of one of the statements. So I'll have to pull that up when we get there. Okay. Um, all right, second row, let me go to um, Aunt Carolyn. Time for home, though. Ha, aqua home, though. Or ha, nay. Oh. Any feedback? Mm, okay. <laughs> Thumbs up. Um, and who knows the translation? How are you doing? Oh. Sorry. Or are you are you doing well? Peace depending. Mm -hmm. I hope. Okay. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go back to Nelson uh, for the third row. If you're able to, Nelson. Okay. Um, I am quite uh, yeah. uh, John Day, I quite uh, yeah. Honey. Uh -huh. Any feedback for Nelson? Mm. All right. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. All right, and who knows the translation? Do you hear Kaiwa? Oh. Hello, Kaiwa. I hear Yes. You oh, don't well. understand. Are you Kaiwa hearing or do you understand Kaiwa? You understand Kaiwa. Good. Oh, yeah. Oh, aho. Uh -huh. All right. For these last three, uh, Ramon, go ahead and say the last three in a row. Nom, no, no, how they are so hot. Put some tone into it. No, um. No, no. How oh, okay. How oh, would they? Oh, so I think Miss Marion said put some tone in it. So emphasize the tones. Okay. I feel like if I'm doing that, I feel like I'm going to add that English inflection on there. Like, mm -hmm. no, um, no, 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 I think in this case, she's saying it, it sounds okay, because it goes, the tone, it goes higher at the end. So it'll kind of match the English inflection. No, 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 how they also, huh? That last one is good. Said the last one's good, Ramon. Got that one down. So, no, um, <clears throat> okay, no, um, like that or 
So we just have to review lesson three. Um, but since Dane is here, let me um, stop sharing. <laughs> All right. So um, Dane's here to kind of. So Dane, we've been having some questions, and I know not everyone is is on here tonight. Some people had conflicts tonight, but we are recording. Um, but some of us have uh, some questions about the level two credentialing process and um, just, you know, kind of want to know what would be helpful, um, what things should we focus on studying. Um, I know that there's a lot of resources, so, you know, we'd love to hear about any updates that you have from the uh, Kiowa Language Credentialing Board and also um, kind of what the level two credentialing process is gonna look like. Um, because I think for a lot of us that have been credentialed at level one, we want to uh, try to go for level two by May. So that's kind of our goal is uh, to kind of move towards that. So we're really glad that uh, you could take some time this evening. Um, so uh, I'll turn it over to you and give you the floor to share whatever you'd like to with us. Okay. Oh, uh, cool. So on the level two, some people were able to go into the person-to-person -person meetings last semester. So at least on the interview portion, we do got a few that, um, I don't know if you can hear that rain, but that rain's pretty loud in this window over here. So. I don't know if y'all can hear y'all in y'all's end. Can you hear it? Uh, no, it sounds okay. Okay, all right. Okay. <clears throat> so um, that was the main. That was one of the main things I was gonna look for today is a time in which to do this, whether to do it in May or August for the face-to-face. -face. So these will, um, the interviews will be face-to-face -face along with a few other items. And there's a few <laughs> items that you would do on your own, similar to what you did for level one, uh, but you'd be doing it for level two. So just to kind of keep in the same format, the interview was like the one-on-one -on -one that uh, some of us did later on and uh, last year. Uh, and for the people who came early, uh, they got to actually do the interview. Um, they actually got to do the interview um, in person, and we had a setup to where we could do a level two and even a level three on that one just for that portion. So if you remember the conversational portion, the conversational portion is part of the interview. So you just get um, better at these. Uh, basically, you just. Uh, you answer the questions, but you try to elicit some questions on your own as well. So that kind of level two is that you're taking it upon yourself to ask other questions, ask us things while we're asking you uh, items. And if you kind of go off script, um, uh, that that's kind of what we're looking for, that you're taking initiative to use more conversational items and even stuff outside of the, uh, outside of the conversational uh, 
word uh, conversational phrases that we have set up for you. Um, so there's kind of a little bit of an update on that. Um, let's see, make sure it doesn't pop up on, it's popping up on several different items. Let's see. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and um, do the save real quick on one because I would have one updated for you all. Um, and let's see if it sends. Not everybody's going to be able to see that in the chat, but if you do, you can go ahead and save it. Um, that's kind of the update for the conversational uh, items. Now, this is for the classroom, so some of the answers are a little bit long and uh, kind of robotic at times. Um, but uh, this is the update for the classroom. We may, there are some little modifications we do for the community based on uh, uh, just kind of being in a different situation. So say for instance, I, I'm most likely going to use ha goi ki em da, ha goi ma em da, are you a Kiowa woman or a Kiowa man, rather than goi dogu and goi ya goi to kind of encompass everybody that's going to be in there. So that's a little bit more open, open-ended, where usually if I said dogu or ya goi, it's they're usually going to be younger, younger than uh, yourself. So um, there's some little things like that that get changed. So uh, it's not too big of a deal to have to change to that. You just change little words here and there. Um, so the text, the, the text that you're using for the conversation does have some of this stuff, but not everything, because there's been a lot of updates since then. It went from 12 lessons to 16. Although there are repeated stuff, there are added pieces, and some of the conversation answers had changed to be a little bit more accurate. And again, these are the student ones for the classroom. So again, you got longer answers. Uh, and most of those longer answers just avoid people just saying hall all the time in the classroom and just trying to get get by just saying hall without understanding what's actually being said. So uh, that's kind of the reason why there's more, it's more lengthy. Uh, because you can't really tell what, if somebody actually knows what you're saying. So there's some ad little additions there uh, that you can kind of remove in a regular conversation. So there are some things where you, you do just add hall to it, and they might ask you the translation to that just to make sure that you know uh, what it is. Um, and then as far as uh, pronunciation, you did the pronunciation when it came to the pronunciation uh powerpoint for level one the next thing you do is there were some stories available in one of these folders and i don't know if everybody has access to the level two for list folders but they were stories and they came along with uh, audios that you can listen to and you got to read along with the story and listen to yourself and and try to get as close to the pronunciation as possible that are on the story. So uh, I have to go back and find that folder because I know they're there um, if you still have access to those folders, but um, I don't know if everybody has access to those, but you do, instead of reading off of a PowerPoint, um, you actually read from a story and, uh, and uh, hold on. They said they admit to a waiting room with it. It's uh, Kathy was coming in, so she should oh. be coming in in a second. Okay. Uh, but you do read a whole story and you do work on your uh, pronunciation. So when you do record those stories and read them off and listen to them, you're probably not going to want to go with your first one. You, you're probably going to have to get used to your, listen to your own voice and try to make improvements on that. And just then you kind of send us some drafts, whichever draft that you feel like is good. And then we can kind of listen to it and, and find out, okay, where are the pronunciations? What which sounds are you missing the most? And then we kind of mark them so we can give it back to you and give you the feedback. Okay, um, maybe you're missing the AU sounds a lot, or maybe your T is turning into a blended D or your blended D is turning into a T or vice versa. There's different things that different people do where they're reading and maybe they're not catching everything. So it's mostly look at the patterns of where you're missing. Uh, Everybody who's going to read them is probably going to miss little things here, here and there, uh, because they are longer readings. It's a little bit harder to, uh, 
a little bit harder to do. And I, I'm thinking of going ahead and at some point do updates to this where these stories are on PowerPoints and they're line by line rather than reading it off the entire thing, uh, just to kind of slow it down for you all. But that does take a long time to actually retype those and then revoice those. So it's probably not gonna be anytime soon. So y'all will probably have to do the early versions where you have to read the entire story. So, um, which would be good practice for everybody that's in here anyway. Um, to read it in real time and try to do it at some kind of pace. Um, and that'll be fine. It'll, it means that we can be a little bit more lenient too on a few things uh, versus if we had it line by line, then we'd have to try to get everybody to get everything correct. So, uh, but then it won't flow as much when we do, if we do it that way as well. Uh, but it's good for level two. So if we get any stories like that, like I'm working on one right now, that theme moss story, I'm trying to put it into a PowerPoint where we do, um, where it does have it line by line. People could choose to do that one or they could choose to uh, read any of those other stories. So that will be in the place of the PowerPoint that you did for level one where you just did pronunciation. Now you gotta read through and try to pronounce. Uh, with audio help because it does have the audios and the voices with them, uh, stories and things like that. So uh, it kind of teaches you how to shadow voices, which means shadowing voices is uh, one of those things in language learning where you try to follow the the flow is how somebody's speaking and the sounds and you're trying to repeat after them. So um, in this one, again, it's going to be a little bit more is a little bit more challenging because uh, you, you'd have to kind of stop and pause sometimes and take take the recording back. Uh, some Sometimes the speakers speak faster than other speakers. So that does make it a little bit tougher to, uh, to kind of keep up with. Um, so that's the, that's the second part. Um, the third part I wanna talk about is, we're going back to the family terms, wanting to make family terms a, uh, important part of it. And so for level one, most of you knew I just named off uh, some uh, different ways you say family terms in Kiowa. And then you told me what I was saying in English. So I want to make sure that you understood and got used to hearing those other family terms, not just the calling to forms that everybody's used to in the communities, but the other forms we say his mom, your mom, and and my mom. So there's ways to say that, that you don't often hear mixed into English a lot of times. The other ones you tend to hear them even mixed in with the English when you're calling two people. But then you probably also found out not all, um, not all your family terms have calling two forms. So whenever it goes to say for instance, sister, it's not very common for two sisters to often call each other out by that family term, unless you're calling to a uh, great grandmother or a great granddaughter, then you got versions of that that you can that you often hear using. But between actual two sisters of the same uh, generation, you don't hear that as much, and you don't hear a uh, kind of like if I said nephew or we were saying uncle or you're on your mom's side, uh, we say segi. That for on the women's side of that, there's no uh, calling to form for niece or nephew. You can talk about them and you got that word am um, that a lot of there's quite a few people that had to get used to that or am um, ta. Uh, no am um, uh, or what was it? Ah uh, um, his or uh, her nephew, ah uh, am um, ta. Uh, no, no. Ah uh, am um, your nephew, ah uh, am um, ta, your niece. If I'm talking to a woman, um, it just has a different term, but there's just no calling to form for it. So you don't know, actually call to them by that terminology. So not all of them have that. So that's what we're kind of learning through that. And I know people are having a hard time with that not a, uh, a because it is used, but it's used in it when you're talking about it in a certain way for uncle and nephew and niece for, for a guy. Um, so um, on this one, it's flipped around. We say one of those versions in English. So say for instance, I want you to translate um, his or her mother, then you would say the form I saw a day. So you wouldn't say because that means your mother. You wouldn't say because that's talking about your own mother, just um, like that's her name. You have to say her mother. 
and then from my mother you can say no as well. So we're looking for a specific one of those. You have to study a little bit more than you did for the level one and try to catch on to those and how to use those family terms. Some of them are which ha haven't always been commonly used uh, in the community when it makes it to English uh, very often. So just, we're still trying to uh, basically kind, kind of learn the family structure and learn the different ways that you say uh, these family terms and when they're used because they are used in different situations. So this level two is the situational. You got to say the difference between my brother, your brother, his or her, uh, his or her brother, and then it's gonna. Those are gonna be different words for both of us, as you learned in uh, in level one, or as you might have already known before that. Um, that we see we, we have we say different words for brother depending on your gender, different words for sister depending on and your gender, and we tend to say the same thing for the opposite gender sibling. So. Uh, uh, say, for instance, Melody's brother or my sister, we're actually going to use the same term for that when we got this kind of reciprocal thing between brothers and sisters, where we use the same term when referring to each other's brother or sister, if they're the opposite gender. So um, so there's a little bit more on there. If you go to study stack, the, those uh, cards are all there for you to kind of look at them. Uh, the card stack is a lot bigger because um, they're split up in this one. So um, that's the family terms. It's just reversed. It's not translating to English, the general, uh, the, the general family terms. So I'll give you an instance. In Kyla 1, I said, uh, let's see, I said, not total, not total, a total day. And it was to get you to say which family term I'm talking about. It's talking about a father or dad. So I said, my father, your father, his or her father. If you need extra help, I would say ta toy and ta, the calling to form, and then the kind of the formal, uh, that formal version, ta toy. So then I gave you two extra ones if they had those terms. Not again, not every not every family term had all five terms. Some of them only had three only. Um, so then you just said you simply just said dad. You didn't you didn't translate everything all out the full way. On level one. Now, level two, again, reverse that. We take that same thing. I would say, uh, I would say, a total day. And you would have to say his father, no, I would say his father or her father. And you would have to say, a total day. And it couldn't be any one of those other four terms. It would have to be that one specifically. So, um, so it's just a little bit more uh, in depth than you did before for family terms. So again, we going over and we got the conversational. What some people did actually get level two on that one when we did it in person. Uh, you have, and that's going to be the interview form for. So now it won't be online like this. It'll be in person. So you you, you would have to come in and actually take it and take the time to take that one. Um, we got the reading, the pronunciation where you're reading a story. There's a set of stories that you can pick from for that, and you can start those anytime you want to. You don't have to wait until uh, the date that we pick in May to actually uh, meet with y'all. Uh, number three, you have the family terms. It's from uh, English to Kiowa this time, and it's for specific terms. It's not for the entire set at one time. It's just a specific family, uh, version of that family term. And then number four, um, the grammar portion, which kind of was probably the hardest portion that was there for a lot of people that were going through it because you had to do a lot of, you had to do a lot of, uh, a lot of memorization and a lot of repetition for that one for those to stick. So if you kind of forgot them, you'll have to go back through them and re-memorize them again. And we'll get, we're going to be using a lot more nouns with them this time around. So um, I think we originally started with shoe and shoes, dog and dogs, and flower and flowers, just as your first one. I would I wouldn't use tree, but tree does something kind of different. So I don't want to use tree for that one. I just want to use something that uh, where you can kind of see the word and it, and it and it goes up by a regular pattern. Uh, tree does something different that kind of unexpected. It's an exception to the rule. So 
um, I think we're adding on three more. So we're adding like, uh, I think it's shirt and dress, which are this, which are, we're going to use the same word for. And you kind of treat it as uh, a word like that, like pants. So we never just signalize a pair of jeans. Actually, that's the only way we make it singular if we say a pair. If you say my jeans, that's still plural. You also treat clothing like that. A lot of times, like Kiowa clothing is counted as plural. It is easier to actually um, use words like that. You just have to remember how their pattern is. So we'll have to come in and kind of re rehash what that pattern is about. We'll have to get back into, uh, into pronouns. And those who do catch it and understand how that works, then, uh, you know, on some of these sessions, you can probably teach that too. Like some of the level one people probably know that pattern. There's a few, a few that do, so they can also teach it as well. Um, I think we add in house and house, the way you talk about it, it seems to always be singular, no matter if there's one, two or three houses. Um, I think there's, I think we use plum. And plum does something weird. It stays in that long form version. And then, uh, then we start using it family terms or people. And I'm not sure which one to use. I don't know whether you use uh, family because we do have that in that one question. Hot date of date go name dog. So we might not even go singular or dual with it. We're probably just going to use the plural form, which is state goat. And you can see how it's kind of similar to talking about dogs, and yet sometimes their pronouns are different. So we may only use one example. We won't use the full set because with uh, a lot of times with people terms and tribes, um, it's not like it's not going to be like in English where you just say, oh, um, uh, I saw a Cheyenne when I went to Oklahoma City. Like you can actually singularize in English Cheyenne without say, th saying Cheyenne person or Cheyenne woman, Cheyenne man, Kiowa woman, Kiowa man. You have to, you, in Kiowa, you, you know, the word Kiowa is always tagged on to something. It never just exists by itself unless you pluralize it as Goi Gu. It's always like Goi Tali, Goi Maton. So it's uh, that word Kiowa just never cuts down alone. Whether it's when you're just talking about one Kiowa, it has to you have to specify well, what Kiowa is it? What is it? it what are they? They're the Kiowa man, Kiowa boy, Kiowa girl. You can't just say Kiowa. It just doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way when you're speaking Kiowa, just like it does in English. So we may just have one. Uh, we may just have one example. So it would be the plural for family, maybe the plural for Kai was, I'm not sure which one that that we're, that we're gonna use. It might be family. I think I already have it set as family for the classroom. So that might have might be that way for you all as well. On the other end, if we do stick it in there, we might have separate slides for Kiowa man, Kiowa woman, and then just Kiowa people in general. So that we can all put a little bit more, more into it. So I really haven't figured out which one's going to be the best one for y'all to understand how these work. Uh, so there's a little bit more involved with that seventh one. Um, but again, I think there was a version of it in the study materials, but um, I'll have to update it uh, as I'm updating my classes too to do this stuff. And yeah, I'm slowing it down for my classes. I'm th starting to look like my Kaiba one this year is looking more like the level zero stuff um for them so it might, might be able to make some better level zero stuff for anybody coming in or just like re looking at stuff so if they need to slow down like uh in the pronoun part there's a better way to do it where you slow down and you just leave the you just leave the nouns out all together once we throw the nouns in i knew it threw a lot of people off because people are so distracted by nouns that they're not thinking about what they're saying next they're just thinking about that noun and they're just plugging in. They start guessing pronouns, which is probably the worst thing you can do in Kiowa is guess on pronouns. I always say that over and over and over. But a lot of people do because they sound the same. Sometimes you got, yeah, that means, yeah, bon, I saw it. Yeah means I do it. But then you got get da, which means they are. But then you got get ah, yeah, where it still means they, but in English we say it. So then you got English mess messing with that. Uh, translation to the phrases too. And then you got, uh, I don't know, Tali, Tali, uh, 
Kali Hold dug your bone. The, the boy saw the shirt or the shirts, or the shirt, it could be the shirts, where it says, where Gibbo means he saw them. And so Gib means something else there too. So um, it's just, a, you have to have a lot of context for that. And so that's where the nouns come in. The nouns help with context, but they can also be a distraction at the same time. So you're still kind of doing the same thing. Uh, again, it's flipped around. You're actually translating to Kiowa on, on, this, on this round, on the level two round. Level one, all I said was a sentence. Like I said, uh, I can't remember which version I used. I think I switched it up for different people because I had different versions of see, watching, looking at, saw. Um, so I use that one that that was a little bit more consistent. So I said, "Do de ne on, give me the two shoes," and you just had to say, "Give me the two shoes." On um, this next round, it's a little bit different. I end up saying, uh, "I say, give me the two shoes," and that's what you got to translate. So then you got to say, "Do de ne on," and so you got to say what it is in Kaiwa this time instead of uh, translating it back to English. So that's kind of similar to what we're doing uh, doing in Kiowa 2s. And in Kiowa 1 right now, we're just doing uh, English to Kiowa. So Kiowa 1 does have some level 1 stuff in it as well uh, for our classes up here. So there's a little mix in there. Some stuff was actually influenced by this program for the Kiowa 1 class now. So uh, that's why I'm seeing what it looks like when you have a new set of people, how fast or how long does it take them to get that, uh, to understand how to do this by the end of the year. And so they couldn't come out of Kaiwa 1 actually being able to do the stuff that you did for, for level 1, but they can do part of it. And they can do the pronoun part pretty easy, I think. Uh, everything else, that they'll, they may have to wait until Kaiwa 2 to learn all that kind of stuff. So again, rehash of what it is. I'm going to go ahead and type it in as I'm saying it. So number 1, you have the conversation, and I'm going to put slash interview. And, and, it, and it, it, I'm going to put initiate more conversation on your own. That's that's more of a level two thing to do. You're not just waiting for us to ask a question. You actually ask questions or or send the question back to us or pull stuff from, from elsewhere, just kind of out of your head and just keep the conversation going for level two. Uh, the second one, I'm going to go ahead and but this is the grammar pronouns. I'm just gonna put it in a different order than I just presented it, but uh, pronouns, written. I think it's noun, pronoun, verb with seven sets of nouns. It might be eight, but the eighth one's not hard. Uh, and it is from English to Kiowa. So that's number two. Number three is uh, family terms. English to Kiowa, more specific uh, terms. In other words, you had to say the specific terms for your, uh, I don't know, your son. Instead of just saying my son, your son, his or her son, you gotta say specifically your son. And then we have pronunciation, which I kind of put on a second, but I'm putting it as fourth. Pronunciation, which is reading a long story or a set of short stories. So it just depends on what you pick and we'll have to kind of decide uh, how many that you end up doing. If you pick short ones, um, then you might have to read two or three of them. But if you pick a long one, then you just kind of stick with the long one. So that, those are the main uh, four areas, actually, as far as the Kiowa portion is concerned, what you do for level two. And so most people who did level one, they actually got, they did the, the professional development part. So then all you really got to worry about more is uh, this, unless uh, there's something else that people have to do too. Um, otherwise, uh, I kind of leave it for questions because this is kind of vague. I didn't have anything, I didn't, I didn't pull up anything to go with it. I just kind of uh, over did an overview of the four areas, just kind of generally. Oh, uh -huh. um, question. Uh, so 
are you putting the material, the study material, is it still in that folder uh, credentialing study material? Yeah, um, I don't know how much of the, I need to look back to see how what, what level two stuff is in there, because I don't think all the level two stuff is, is quite in those. Okay. So that's what I have to update is that, and I probably need to put the stories in there if they're not in there, because that's something you can actually do right away and start practicing on right away. And for the stories, um, what is the best way for us to record them? Let me share my screen. I could pull up the uh, the Google Drive folder. Uh, let's see. You can record them. Uh, you can record them on your um, on your voice memos if you wanted to on your phone. That's how I do. It. Then I erase if I don't like the recording. Then I erase it and just do another one. It's a little bit easier because it's going to be uh, one recording for most people. And if you don't like the way it sounds, or if you just want to hear two different versions of yourself, or maybe do a version. And a lot of times if I did something, when I do stuff like that, I read something and see how long it takes me. And then I read it again. And sometimes I read it without recording myself, because sometimes when I got the recording going, I'm worried too much about what I'm saying. Um, and then, then I get thrown off a little bit. So, um, the, okay, yeah, so I see it on there. You got those different stories, and it doesn't have the ones with the um, with the uh, recordings. So, um, would that be it, in uh, these ones? There's the end, in, it says endings for endings. Oh, you know what? I lost that one on my, so I'm gonna have to go in there and get that out of there because I actually lost my version of that. So, uh oh, and then there. there's these ones right here, the Daniel. Yeah. Those ones are good to actually take a peek at first. If there's one that you, by request, that you really want to have a recording to go with them, we can kind of make it upon request, and I can I can do one for y'all. Uh, but these ones right here, they actually come with the uh, with the with the recording, and you can just play it. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so does i put that link in the chat i think everyone should have access because i think you accessed it for the level one potentially but just double check and let dane know if you need access to that folder and this is the story you said you were working on right the yeah i'm going to try to put this one in kind of a um, more of a uh uh, PowerPoint format where it is where I do have it recorded line by line. Oh, okay. that's that's the first one I'm going to try to get done because I do want to do it for my class. So since I'm doing it for my class, um, it, then it should be available for everybody else too. And then you said for for the uh, the ones from uh, Miss Gonzalez uh, materials, um, you said that we could start like we could just start with the pronunciation and then get feedback from. from yeah, we'll and um, those actually do, um, they do have recordings. Um, oh yeah, that's right. There's a CD, well, there were CDs. I don't know if there's digital versions. I've never, um, I only know that there used to be CDs with some of them. Yeah, things. if they're ripped off, off of there, uh, then they'd be digital, so um, they don't have too much, and all the um, people don't use CDs as much anymore. So right. it's hard to find uh, stacks of CDs think, off. I don't even think I have. I used to have a set, but I think I might have left it with the Kiowa Child Care Center. So I don't, I don't have the CDs anymore. So I don't know where to get these recordings. I'll see if I can find my set. I know I have a digital version somewhere. Awesome. And that way you can shadow their voice in there. And uh, that's a good one that goes line by line because she does uh, go line by line that she translates to English too. And um, eventually this kind of for like a Kiowa for a level three type thing, you start actually pulling these apart and actually translating them word for word. So she'll have them translated in there, but like in a level three thing is when we actually start translating stuff and doing that kind of stuff. Because by that point, anybody who's doing level three is interested enough in it that they'll start that, the, you know, that they're probably going to um, um, know more about what to do with uh, pulling words apart. Some people already do. So some people are already kind of ahead of the curve in that they're uh, 
and that they know how that sentence structure works and they know how to translate stuff. And usually it's best to translate from right to left, not left to right. So that's, wow. that's, that's kind a of a, <laughs> that, yeah, for anybody who does it, don't, um, that that that's what relates to that pronoun guessing is because you don't know what that 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 verb is at the end and if you don't know what kind of verb it is you probably won't be able to tell what pronoun it is only people who uh, uh know kiowa better will be able to know the context of it for everybody else you just kind of have to get used to doing it the long way and looking stuff up and trying to figure it out um so we can have some sessions on that and that'll be more toward geared toward uh a level three, which we can really go into maybe next fall. Awesome. So you're saying if we wanted to translate, we should start always because the verb comes last. And then mm -hmm. like this, for instance, we learned is the, the hearsay or the storytelling tense. So then we would look that up with this root verb. And then we would know we could use that pronoun to go with. We know which pronoun chart to use. Based yeah, on. I don't, I know there's a little chart that tells you once you figure out what your verb, which pronoun charts can you use, and then you kind of narrow it down from there. Mm -hmm. And it keeps you awesome. from uh, guessing, but yeah, and you do have to have the charts with you. But that's, that, yeah, that's the best way to do it is translate oh. right to left instead of left to right. And uh, this, uh, do you know if there's a recording of this? Um, no, that one will have to be a, uh, that one will have to be a, uh, uh, can, I can do it by request. I just, uh, I'll just have to figure out what all the, uh, what's, uh, what other markings are in that. So I'll go through this and, and then figure out what the markings on it, uh, maybe run it by our board. And, uh, and then once we get that, then we're able to, uh, then we're able to uh, do that. And I remember these ones, yeah, they come with the songs, right? Oh, that's awesome. You know, I have the, I have a recording, um, I think it's on YouTube, uh, Grandma Dorothy um, singing, she says a little bit of the book, but she sings the song, the first song, and then she continues to tell the story and sings the second song that goes with it. So, okay, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty awesome. If anybody does that one and you want that second song on there, then we can always add it. Awesome. All right. Um, okay, so uh, that would be, so I found those if you go to the portion C folder, pronunciation and reading, and then the stories and conversations to shadow, and then they're in these folders here. All right, let me uh, stop sharing. Um, All right, any any other questions? Do we think we'll be ready by May, everyone? <laughs> And then, so once we do that, I mean, even if uh, we do one in the winter time too, uh, for level three and level two, because um, and this one, it, the uh, it looks like a pool is a lot smaller, so it's a lot more manageable. So um, uh, we can have that one in May. So it looks like May around around somewhere around May is going to be a good time, and that's a good time for me. So we'll check with the, I guess we could check with the rest of the board and. Uh, for the board, um, I'll have a, an outline of what our meeting is going to be about, and a, a big portion of that is going to, or one of the main uh, portions of that is to actually find a good date for um, for uh, for when we can uh, do that. So I know there's some dances going around uh, during uh, kind of toward the end of May. Uh, so I don't know if people, if there's going to be more people around during that time, but of course, everybody's going to also want to go to uh, watch those dances. They're going to go to those two as, as well. So, uh, Well, if you did it in like the uh, mid morning or the morning, like you did on some of the ones you did last spring, um, that seemed to work out for some people that they're still able to make it to those. Okay. So uh, I guess we'll, 
uh, talk about in our meeting. So at, once we get in our meeting, then this this meeting will start. So for everybody who's on the board, um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to send out a, a little table of what we're going to talk about. I'm trying to think of what that's called. Uh, Agenda? Yeah, an agenda of what we're going to talk about, because there's not too much to talk about. We, we do have one meeting a month, but every now and then we might have two, uh, even three at, at certain points. Even like in May, I bet, I bet there's going to be more meetings, uh, more frequent, just because we're getting close to that period. Um, but um, usually just uh, one meeting a month is what we're going to do. So we're going to do one next week, and we're going to do it about an hour before this uh, this one, and then we'll kind of get that discussed. So we'll, we might have a good time, a uh, good weekend to actually um, um, kind, kind of an, a ballpark idea at that point of what the date's going to be. And again, with the, um, with the pronunciation, um, you can kind of do that on your own and, and then you just contact me and you can just kind of send it to me. Uh, the other stuff, um, then we kind of, we do to kind of do that in person. Some of them we may decide to do one-on-one -on -one rather than as a, than as a board. It just depends on, on what the board feels is, is best. But I know that conversation interview is best done with the entire board present. Oh. Oh, uh, Dane, Honda inside, though. Honda. Um, are you going to be, or is there going to be a level two Kiowa language credentialing checklist available? I, I know you did one for level one last year. Uh, I, okay. Um, I can go ahead and look at the list, how it, how it set up, uh, how it was set up for last semester, and then I can do one that's more for that, that's more for this one. So I can set up, I'm going to set it up about the same. Um, and just be a little bit, and I'll be a little bit more detailed about it, what, what you have to get, how you do it. Awesome. Uh -huh. And then um, I guess another uh, question is, do we, um, do we need to complete that? Uh, I think last year with the KLCRP, which I guess with the tribe is uh, the Kiowa language department now, um, we had to do a, uh, a whole, credentialing checklist with like professional development and all of that stuff. Are we for level two, do we need to do that again? Do like, do we have to turn something into the tribe as well as the board? I guess just, I have questions about that too. Like what that's um, I, I was thinking that level one um, for all that stuff, that kind of, um, that kind of takes care of it for at least that time period. I thinking about, three or four years I think we'll have to kind of look back and see if we we're going to have we're going to have to use redo some of that stuff and just as a kind of check every five years um, to see what people have and it should be easier because by that point a lot of people will have like more more intricate lessons and things like that so they can turn in um, they can turn in whatever it is that they've been working on throughout the entire time. So it should be easier if we do have to uh, resubmit. But I don't think for this first one it's really necessary because you've already did you already did it last year. Uh, oh, awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, for any of our uh, credentialed teachers, do you all? Does anyone have any questions? Honda and Sida. Okay. Then, um, so then between now and May, we're going to go and we're going to get all four of these things completed. Uh, will we have a time, you know, are you going to give us the times that we can actually like the interview for sure? Yeah, the interview is going to be a set date. Um, the pronunciation, I mean, you can turn in versions of it as early as you, you want to. Mm -hmm. So just something you can get done. Uh, family terms, we that that may be something we would just do on May, and then uh, the grammar uh, the, the grammar part noun pronoun verb that might be a one on one. That might that might be one that I'll that I'll have to do like we did last semester last mm -hmm. year, because there's a lot more going on in it, and they're not 
exactly full i mean they're full sentences and and they do make a complete thought but the more it's it's more based on what you're actually saying in the sentence so you got a lot of context around it that's not there uh, and you don't want to add any extra words to distract you either so that's why they're kind of simplified even though you know from learning them they're not actually simple oh. So that might be one where we can do a one on one at, and I can do those ones at your request. Uh, that might be a way we do that. Um, well, we'll see what we do, what we kind of decide on in our meetings, and we'll decide on it there, which ones that we uh, you have to come to May if you, uh, in person for an interview. Oh. Awesome. Um, so I was looking at the uh, conversation PowerPoint. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, but I. This is Carolyn. So for our to practice these, are we going to add these to the Wednesday night sessions on some of this? Oh, yeah. That was um. That was going to be my just looking at that PowerPoint. Dane, that you put in the chat, and does it how how well does it match up to the 2020 version of the course packet for the Kaiwa language classes? Uh, not exactly. Everything's been switched around a lot to okay. fit the update. So you see some of the same phrases, but there's a lot of stuff that's not in the course packet that's in the PowerPoint. Okay, so we should probably study the PowerPoint in our sessions. Could we still, I have to look at the comparison, but could we still use the oral quiz practice pages from the Yeah, course and you can, if it, if it shows other stuff in those uh, practice quizzes, um, then you can, uh, then you can kind of create stuff that looks really similar to it to add the other stuff in there. So just uh, use it as a template if you want to. I don't know if I just, did I just send you, do you just have the PDF for it? Oh, okay, yeah, the, maybe, the 2021. Maybe I can I can somehow find, uh, find the Word document and then you can just copy and paste from there and use those templates to make new ones and updated ones. Oh, awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would help us so that we can prepare for level two if we start focusing on these uh, the um, language that you have in the PowerPoint here. And then uh, we could, because the conversations, that's what we've been doing the past few Wednesdays is uh, we'll go through like the language in the first part of the lesson and then go to that oral quiz practice and we'll take turns kind of having conversations with each other using those scripts. And so that's been really helpful to just get used to us talking and then getting feedback on pronouncing and stuff like that. So um, yeah, we'll, ha we'll have to look at, because um, it looks like like for the first couple lessons, very similar, but I notice like the further you go, it gets um, different. Yeah. So, okay, well, that helps. I think that's really exciting. So uh -huh, for sharing that with us. Um, there's some things in the 16 lessons too, just to kind of give you a heads up, like some of those lessons are easier than others. So you'll see things get repeated too. And sometimes it's just things that I thought, well, you know what, they need to hear this more times than just in one lesson. So they need to hear it in one, two, or it might be even repeated into a third lesson somewhere. So where it forces you to get more reps on certain phrases that I noticed that uh, people have a hard time with, like, or, and, and there's other phrases in there where I noticed that sometimes it doesn't compute or it doesn't click the first time when they're doing a lesson, and then they have it repeated in a lesson later on, and then it's then it, they memorize it better. So uh, this is, not every lesson is going to be completely new material. Oh, uh -oh. so um, is it OK if I share that PowerPoint or would you like it shared as a PDF? Um, is it OK uh, to share it with the Wednesday group? There's about um, it's all of the list of the level one credentialed teachers. Yeah, you're talking about the PowerPoints I put under the chat or the ones that oh. are in the yeah, uh, yeah. Anybody, anybody can go ahead and use those. Um, basically, there's just materials, so um, y'all will know. Y'all kind of know from um, from uh, the first round, the level one round, 
how to use those. And of course, they don't come with instructions on how to use them. There's different ways you can actually use those. So they're just basically they're just considered the materials without any context of how to use them. But I think y'all have kind of used, found different ways to use them than I actually use in my classroom. So they're kind of open as far as how you can use them. Oh, so you can try. Awesome. Um, okay, so let's see. I think what because um, what we wanted to try to do was we were using the uh, course back to kind of build like sequential quiz practices. So what I'll do for next week is look at the the first couple lessons in the PowerPoint and maybe just create a template based on that language. So we have what we've already gone through which is uh, the help phrases up through lesson three, and then we'll just add in the level two conversation practice language as well, so. And here's something that we can do every now and then, or you can do with each other is, in my classes, and um, those lessons one through 16, people can study them on their own because there is a Kiowa version and an English version to compare them to. So um, that's something I realize people don't even understand in my class the first time around is that those, these two conversational PowerPoints is a Kiowa version and an English version, and they, they, they match slide by slide for the most part. And uh, so you'd use both of them at the same time. One for pronunciation, the Kiowa one is usually meant for pronunciation and reading purposes. The one with English is, is usually uh, there for memorization purposes where you got the audio in Kiowa, but you got the words in English there. So um, uh, you're gonna wanna have them both downloaded. They look identical when it first starts out. Uh, it's just that one is written in Kiowa, one's written in English. Um, and then if you see this lesson three that she was just at, uh, you also got multiple uh, responses to on some things. So you can choose the response and you don't even have to say the responses that are in there. You can, you can add other responses. If we put all the responses you can do to all of these, you know, it, it wouldn't even fit on the page. So, uh, <laughs> So this was this was kind of lesson three kind of pushes the limits on responses. Uh, my students had to learn this. That's one of the hardest ones for them to learn. It's just because there's so many responses and there's no uh, unlike lesson one, lesson three's questions kind of go here and there with their uh, what you're actually asking. And usually other lessons kind of there's a pattern to them. It's just lesson three is kind of strange in the way that it's set up. Um, lesson three is full of stuff that people would think are the greetings, but they're really just questions. So, um, but yeah, that's how you, you'd use those as kind of studying tools. I'm trying to think there's one other important thing about them uh, that we're in that that's in them. Oh, you can, in my classes, here's how they do it is that they have all 16 lessons. They take two quizzes a, a week at in, um, and they, it's kind of at their own pace or their own decision which lesson they want to start with first. So if you're practicing, if you wanted to practice lesson 16 and lesson 12, they're allowed to do that. Um, so they don't have to start at lesson one. I mean, the order of this is there's no real order. You could actually, I could actually just scramble that up and just change the lessons around and it doesn't really matter. Um, it's kind of up to you yourself whenever you use this. Um, what do you want to? What do you want to learn first? And so the only thing I made that made sense is I put the greetings and farewells in the first two chapters. After that, then it kind of does its own thing. Awesome. So uh, maybe uh, everyone can take a look at this uh, for next week, and then we can see uh, what we want to focus on, or we could just start from the beginning, because I see there's some language in here that is different from what we, there's like maybe one or two new phrases that we haven't gone through yet. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. And any shortenings that you want to do to modify these, you can do them. So modifications okay. to shorter answers, you can, you can, you can do Oh yeah, and it has the audio here, right? For, yes. for the pronunciation. Oh. Awesome. Are we, um, this isn't the one that we're supposed to revoice, is it for level two? 
Oh yeah, I forgot about that one for pronunciation. You do read a story and then you revoice this. Oh, I forgot okay, about okay. that. Yeah, story, you actually okay. do revoice the. Uh, you got to revoice the Kaiwa one because you got the reading with it. So it's this version that you revoice and you just put your voice in there. Um, if you have trouble with technology, you might work with somebody else. Um, even if you even if you come in on the uh, the if you have to use somebody else, even if you're still finishing up on the day that that uh, uh, that we do meet for uh, in person, you can still get a lot of it done in the in the um, the actual day that we do the interviews. So if anybody is uh, not really tech savvy with being their voices on there, um, there's ways around it, and you can kind of plan to uh, work with somebody on that as well. Or you can put both your voices on it and then delete your voice off of one version, delete their voice off another version. So you can work together on these things. You just it just has to be your voice that that's on all of them though. Oh, awesome. Sounds like we might want to use uh breakout rooms or something at some point. <laughs> yeah, and you, yeah, you can work on them in here and you can get them get them recorded and that way then we can kind of listen to them on there. Um, when you um, if you do the revoicing, when you do the revoicing on those, like if you have something like ha no al or ha no al, um, you no longer have to actually record that one again. You just copy and paste that one over and over for a, lo a lot of them. So don't make it harder on yourself by trying to voice every single thing. If something is repeated, you can you can just copy and paste recordings. So don't make it hard. You don't have to make it any harder than what it has to be. Oh, awesome. Shortcuts. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Oh, I have. I thought of another thing. We looked at study stack. Um, I think it was like our first session in January. Um, we looked at study stack as like a resource. And I know that you've told us not to like you know, not to listen to the pronunciations on study stack because it messes it up, but to just use that to kind of help. Is that still going to be helpful for level two, the study stack? Yeah, um, I think I think I might have the level two for uh, family terms on there. Okay, yeah, I think we we did see those. Um, yeah, so just wanted to double check that that would still be a good way to so practice. Yeah, and I think the grammar part has the level two on there as well. Awesome. All right. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be helpful. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, any anything else? Any other questions or comments for the credentialing process? All right. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to uh, give us some updates. And uh, I'm sure there will probably be like maybe in a few weeks, we might have uh, some questions for you, Dane. So we might uh, ask you to come on and join us again to give us some more updates, especially after um, you set some dates for uh, the in-person um, opportunities. We'll look forward to hearing more about that. And anybody who doesn't have my cell, if you lost or anything, I just put it in the chat. Oh. Awesome. All right. Let's see. Uh, it is 817. Um, so do we want to try a 10-minute immersion session? <laughs> see what we can do. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, do we still have, um, I know Ramon, like Ramon might have stepped away. Uh, so I see Kathy, Courtney, Judy, uh, Aunt Carolyn, and then Alice Ann and Nelson. Is everyone ready? Oh. Maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well, I wanted to show you something really quick. I know we talked about, um, I shared some uh, terms that could help us uh, give cues for when we can start talking Kiowa, stop talking English. Um, so 
Let me share my screen again. Okay. Uh, so they're in the Wednesday folder in, in the Google Drive. And so there's, um, they're called a Kiowa session starting song handout and then closing song handout. Okay, so starting, um, basically telling us to um, stop talking English. So let's see. Um, boy, but um, could we have our mentors that are with us um, pronounce this phrase or the sentence for us so we could practice it? Um, Grandma D, can we start with you? How about Martha now? <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, Grandma Martha, would you be able to start us off? Okay. Boy, but I'll call it the zombie dog. And Grandma D? Boy, but I'll call it the zombie dog. And Miss Belma? Boy, but <coughs> boy, but I'll call it the zombie dog. Oh, uh, I think, and I don't see Miss Marion on anymore. I think she had to jump off. Okay. Um, boy, but a koi tongzani tong. Okay, it's a T apostrophe, so you can change that to a T apostrophe. Oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. at the end. Okay. Uh, boy, but a koi tongzani tong. Um, Aunt Carolyn, do you want to try it? Okay. Boy, but a koi don't zani da. No, it's da. What? Da. Da. No, da. Oh. Oh. Yes. So it said apostrophe T? Yeah. Let me, I'm trying to find my word version so I can change it really quick and then put it back up on screen. Um. Ring it the way it was <laughs> and then uh takoi it, it is it is just a regular k in there too takoi takoi okay ha oh. um is uh well let me i'm trying to find it where is it oh, yeah. so many files sorry um the, uh, so the translation. <coughs> well, I don't know where. I'll I'll have to. Don't have speak to English. Uh, I'll have to find the word version and make those changes on it. Um, but it's a stop. English talking, right? Is that so? Boy, but a uh, boy with the regular K here, don't zani, and then talk at the end. Um, let's see. Uh, Ramon, do you want to try saying it with those two changes? Sorry, I can't edit it at the moment. Just how it is right here. So, boy, but choco it on zani to. Oh, and then uh, we have a couple corrections that I have to make. So I have to change the G right here to a K, and then the uh, the D, the strike through D, a popped T. So I'll okay. change that. So, boy, but choco it on zani to. Oh. Um, Kathy, you want to try to catch the changes? Uh, yeah. Uh, boy, but, uh, let's say, boy, boy, don't, Zani, 
ต่อออกออก Dang about swallowed my cereal over here. Okay, so melody, Hande, get your cursor so that strike three G should be a regular K. Is that yes. right? Oh. Okay, and then on the strike three D, it should be a T apostrophe A U. Oh. oh, yep. And I'll make those two changes and then send it out. It's just going to take me a minute to find the file. I can't find my Word version as quick. But yes, that's right. Uh, let's see, uh, Courtney, you want to try pronouncing? Oi, but goi dong sani to. So with the changes that, um, maybe if I pull it up on a word, let me see if it'll open it in Google Docs. <clears throat> Let's see what it does. I want to edit it. No, I don't know. I don't think it likes the writing. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. Um, but where did I put it? I think I put it, I sent an email out with the words. Let me put the correct version in the chat. So I think I can edit it on the email. Um, so that's, so basically the, um, <laughs> there's some research that says that when you're starting to do an immersion session with, with, well, with anyone, but like, especially if you're working with students or young children, then you want to give them a cue um, that uh, basically it's time to stop talking English and then we're going to start talking Kiowa, basically. And that's the point of these phrases here. So, um, so the one that we're making changes on is the second one, which is a pot T. And then uh, do I need to make any changes on, let me pull up the closing one. Uh, where is it right here? Do I need to make any changes on this on, I think I have to add a, a AU at the end. Is that right? Of Obaha. And then get, does that make sense? Does that phrase make sense? What about the G after get? And then that should be a K in it. Well, this one is saying or is that, okay. we're done. Basically, we're finished with talking Kiowa, Kiowa talking. Okay. So, Obaha. So, I think this has to be an AU. At the end on the first line. Yeah. Goi Tanzanma. Is that right? Uh Grandma Martha Nell, is that um does that make sense? This phrase. Obaha get goi to Zanma. Yeah. Goi Tanzanma. And do I need to correct any of the spelling? I think it's um, there's a U behind each A on the Omaha. That's all I get to. Um, okay, I'll um, add the U. Um, and are all the uh, diacritic marks accurate yeah, as far yeah, as? Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. This was a uh, like a phrase that we just had in uh, phonetics, and so I put it. I tried to transcribe it. Hmm. All right. So, so this right here is the, the cue, basically like a cue card that you could use to tell your students that, all right, now we're going to start, uh, we're going to stop talking Kiowa, and then you can allow English again, especially if you're doing immersion sessions in like your classroom or with a group. Um, so I'll make the spelling corrections on these. So let me stop sharing and I'm going to put it in the chat so we can practice saying it.
Um, Omaha, yeah, Troy, Thornton. And then the first phrase, and I didn't make a card for this one, but it's like a, a precursor. Here, let me. Okay, I put it in the chat. Um, the first phrase is basically title of the OU course packet, which is uh, uh, let's see, is it hey hey got goi tongzani? Let's speak Kiowa. Hatso anatonga. Hande. Did it pull up in the chat? I'm going to put it up on a, a Word document. Okay. Maybe this will make it a little bit easier to see. <laughs> okay. Now I think we can see it. But I don't know what to do with those Okay, so uh let's see. Hopefully you can see my screen. This first phrase here, like let's speak Kiowa. Oh, I need some uh, strike throughs here. All right. Uh, can we uh, pronounce the first phrase? Is it hey, but goi thongzani? Goi thongzani. Hot so huh? <laughs> it looks good to me. No, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh uh what was it um hot what was our phrase we learned last week do you did, did uh did they understand me <laughs> did they <laughs> uh i know there was a hey go yeah hey hi get off yep oh <laughs> oh Okay, well, I don't want to keep everyone <laughs> all night. So um, I'm going to make these corrections and I'll send this out again. So we're just going to try an immersion session next week. So I think we have a lot of information to uh, kind of um, figure out and make sure that we're all, you know, we got everything situated. I'm kind of, I'm really excited about this PowerPoint that Dane shared. So I want to uh, go through it and kind of see like what might help us. And then um, maybe we could do uh, 30 minutes of immersion um, for the uh, last 30 minutes of next week's session. So start at 6.30 and then at 7.30, Start our immersion Not session. What? I'm gonna. Oh, <laughs> I was on speaker. I say I'm gonna be down there on Thursday. Uh, so it's Wednesday. So yeah, I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> the twenty second. All right. Well, so how's that sound? We'll uh, we'll change it up a little bit. Oh. Okay, awesome. Well, we got a lot of good information tonight, so we really appreciate um, all your help, Dean, and thank you to the Kiowa Language Credentialing Board. And I think uh, we have some practicing to do. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll rework the uh, lessons, um, kind of our little, our syllabus, I'll rework it for next week so that um, I'll incorporate the PowerPoint and then Send I'll I'll work on it so I can send something on Friday. That way you have over the weekend to study it for next week. 
That's all on the phone, yeah. We have a lot to do. <laughs> ah, Hanya Haiga. Um, <laughs> Grandma D or Grandma Martha now. Uh, Hatsuanathongya, we have a lot to do. Would we say something like we're busy? No, no. Um, have a lot of work. Uh -huh. Eight things off to get, get bought dough or something like that. We've got a lot of work. <laughs> oh, we do. Uh, eight things means a lot. <laughs> Eight days. Yeah. 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 No. Hey. <laughs> Eight days. So I think I get no. We have a lot of work. Yeah. So I think I get no. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds. Eight days. So I think I get no. A lot of work to do. Eight days. So I think I get no. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of work. Is it get at the end? Get yeah, dog? Uh, get yeah. dog. Mm -hmm. Or get. Yeah, yeah, get. No. Get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you yeah. Like and then it goes up too. So it'll go with your regular English intonation. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Get. Uh huh. Don't think it get on. That's good too. Dane, are you able to type that in the chat for us? I'm like yeah. super slow at the diacritic marks. Okay, let me see. Uh, I typed see. something, sure. but I don't know if that's right. And then, Grandma D, what was the phrase you just said? You said, sat they get oi. Get oi. Sat they get oi. Oi is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah, yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not taking Now I'm going to use that with my family all the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm busy. <laughs> Is it, would it be oi, just the oi? Or is it O, I mean, A-U-I? A-U-I. A-U-I, oi. It can mean again, and it can also mean a lot. Oh, OK. Aho. Awesome. So, thank you. Yeah, oi. Like sometimes you could say, on old oi, that means someone's got a big load of stuff they have to carry around or whatever, or take to power or something. <laughs> All my shawl bags. Yeah, <laughs> you're old. <laughs> we all have a lot. We all have clutter. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, all right. Well, um, does everyone feel like, uh, would it be too redundant if we went back to the greetings and the farewells on those first two slides of that PowerPoint Dane shared for next week and practice those new phrases? Yeah, I think that'd be good. Okay. All right, yeah. so I'll... Uh, come up with something and send it out on Friday. <laughs> if anyone has any ideas, uh, email me or text me, let me know. Um, okay, I guess um, we better close up so people can go. Uh, let's see, uh, Judy, are you able to bay dot? So I close this up. <laughs> Ducky, a whole day, they own fail though. Theta, 
Hai đâu đây? Đây đó. Thôi đây kìa. Mà thêm đó kì. Xong kìa kìa. Kìa thai kìa. Xong đó. Xong đó. Bình đó. Gà. Y pa kìa. Bê bê kìa. Thay đô đê. Ô bà hà. Ahô. 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 Awesome. Well, good job, everyone. Uh, get I get and uh, hey, ga ba oi tong tai ta. Oh, 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 uh, Kathy, Kathy, oh. how's Under Phyllis doing? How is Phyllis doing? Uh, we put her into another rehab today, so she's trying to get better. She's just needing to use her arm for some oh. reason. Forgot how to use it. Oh, so so uh, yeah. Just she's doing okay though. So okay, All right. Yeah, I'll tell her you say hi. Okay, yeah, yeah. I tell her I was asking about her. Okay, love you. Uh, love you too. Hope cope de thaw. Cope de aim do. Oh, cope de aim do. Not not cope. Cope g cope cope. Oh, 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 o